How's it going, everybody? Doing a, uh, com- it's not really a combination bit, but it is. I want to do a review of Silent Hill short message, but I'm also going to ramble about the PlayStation showcase that was, well, I don't know when this will be going up, but, uh, it was on the 31st. I didn't know about it. I saw because I, I subscribed to Jeff Gershman and, and he was doing a watch along type thing with it. I was like, no shit. So I watched. I, mean, I probably watched it maybe four or five hours after it aired. Something around maybe longer. But uh, I want to quickly talk about. They announced Silent Hill short message, and they're like, oh yeah, and it's free today to download. I was like, what? Um, it was a 12 gig, gigabyte download. It was, I want to say I probably was playing for about two and a half hours. It's probably two to two and a half hours. Um, it was three chapters. It's kind of cool after you beat it, you can go back to any one of the chapters, and I will be doing a gameplay on it. Somebody asked me on Instagram, and I was like, yeah, I'll definitely, because I was even thinking that the second I started playing, I was like, yes, you know, um, I really like this game. It was creepy, had the creepy atmosphere. There was parts that were legitimately not scary, but like dreadful. I'll, and I'll talk about that more in a minute. It was sad, like it deals with suicide and, and depression and bullying, stuff like that. So there's parts in there that were pretty emotional, at least for me. Um, I thought so. Um, and it was beautiful. Like that's what kind of Silent Hill is almost in a way. It's like disgusting and depressing and, and sad but there's also like a kind of a beauty to it as well um <clears throat> this one more so than like maybe a Silent Hill 2 and stuff like that um but uh you're Anita and you're Maya wants to friend Maya wants to meet you at the villa it's just like an apartment complex type thing but this is where kids have been you know, as I say like one a year it's like jumped to their death from the roof um, there's another story in there. Well, I won't, I don't want to spoil everything. Um, but you go in there and it's, you know, it's a, it's a rundown apartment kind of building. Um, Maya's like, oh, meet me here. And all of a sudden she's not there. Shit starts going weird. You just have your cell phone, right? The thing. And Amelie is another friend of yours. This all plays into the story of these three. I'm not going to go into the story, but it's, it's a, a solid story actually i mean it's stuff that you've seen before right but it is solid and it's pretty emotional um for sure i guess you call them twists or, or whatever in there but um there's also uh well and then stuff starts going weird this thing appears it's got like flowers wrapped around its head and like a wooden like i don't know if it's just supposed to be like a table leg or something and you get chased like four or five times throughout the game. You're getting chased. And you got to go the right way because this thing's chasing you. And if you go the wrong way, it will appear, you know, it will cut you off or whatever and instantly kill you. But then you restart and, and your character is like, what the hell's going on? I just died a lot. You know, that plays the theme throughout. It's almost like a curse as well as in here. Um, so it's a little trial and error. He because you got to figure out which ways to go and it gets hectic it gets like really disorienting and crazy towards like the last run the last run you got to find five pictures to get these locks off a door it's almost similar to the locks like on the sound hill for the room um and the thing's chasing you and so once you find the last one you can go out and the thing's not chasing you and you find out what the thing represents and everything like that the creature type thing whatever the hell it is represents um so his backstory, like, your character had a bad upbringing, her mom had probably find out stuff with the mother through, like, backstory stuff. It's pretty depressing as well, actually, really depressing. There's a lot of, you know, stuff in there. And, and the thing I liked about this, and that's the only, this character, monster type thing, is the only thing you encounter in the game in terms of an enemy. There's parts of that where it's really crazy. Like, there's a part where you end up in a school, because you're a student, um... 
I guess maybe you're a senior because they talk about college and your character doesn't want to go and Amelie's calling her while you're in there and texting and then and at first she's like she's like in a loop pretty much because every time you die and then things happen at the end of each chapter I wouldn't say what where she thinks she's done to but you keep you know coming back to find it and the Maya character had committed suicide she was like an artist and then your character really liked her and didn't feel noticed by her and that character I mean, like I said I don't want to spoil everything there's live action actually cut scenes in this with characters it's mostly the Maya character because you see her art throughout the, the apartment complex the villa or whatever they call it and uh there's some live action stuff in there as well um cutscenes it looks pretty decent it's not like a you know, phenomenal looking game but it gets the point of course and like i said it, it has the feel and the spirit or vibe whatever of a silent hill game you know you got the weird monster but it just the, the feel of it feels silent hill it has, like i said it has that sadness is depressing stuff there it's you know the gross environments run down stuff it's got a couple, like, when you're getting chased by this thing, it's, like, legitimately, like, oh, which way do I go? And Because you have your phone, and your phone starts to bug out further when you're holding it. It's like, <sighs> the sound little stuff, like, with the radio and stuff like that in previous games. It starts spazzing out. And when it's closer to you, it'll be bugging out more. You can, you can hit the one button, one shoulder button, and it will give you a back view if it's chasing you. I did that once or twice, but it's, like, way too, like, I'm like, no, I'll just let it chase me. I don't want to keep doing that because it's going to throw me off. Um, and like it gets crazy there's a part where like because you're going you end up like out of the apartment complex into like other areas of the school to you know, progress the story there's one puzzle in there involving a combination for a locker um, which is actually pretty well done um, it's a part where like it's like twisting it's all red and weird looking it's like oh my god you're going through it's a uh, I said that would have the vibe of Silent Hill. It had that claustrophobic feel as well, you know, because you're stuck in this this villa, this rundown apartment complex thing, and, and and stuff. There's a there's a part, and this part was if anyone's played it, you know, if you played Condemned as well, it almost is like mirrors the part in Condemned. I won't say what happens, but I turned around. I was like, what? <laughs> um, there's a part in Condemned Criminal Origins. Uh, made it immediately made me think of that but uh, that got me good and like i said when you're running from the creature thing it's uh you're like oh crap what am I like you can't even focus and you know and i got bit it especially on the last one where i had to find the pictures i bet it a couple of times like four or five times the first one at once because i was like oh what happens and i thought i was done but then you come back obviously and it just repeats and i was like okay and that pattern I figured out quick. The next pattern I figured out quick. And the other ones I figured out quick. I made the other once or twice. But the last one was a couple of times. But uh, voice works decent. Solid. Like I said, it's a, it's an emotional kind of story. Um, and I thought it was good. And just it, it, it invoked Silent Hill. Because a lot of you don't think you slap Silent Hill on something. And you're like, okay. <laughs> you know. But it really had a feeling of a Silent Hill game. The way it presented itself the way it felt and, and I thought that was really cool um I was just gonna say something I completely forgot <laughs> <laughs> and you're finding stuff throughout like I said like uh, stuff and she's almost getting taunted by her mother your character um when you see certain things and stuff and you end up in like actually apartment rooms of your friends and whatever but they're run down there's a part where you're in your old, I guess, apartment or whatever, and you're going through, and you keep kind of circling through, and it keeps getting more and more, like, just disgusting with trash and shit. Um, oh, there's a part when you're running, because when you run, it turns into, like, the Silent Hill, right? Like, things don't look normal now. It's, like, the dark version, or they call it, or whatever. And there's definitely parts in that are, that come almost right from Silent Hill Homecoming, have that same similar kind of look, which I actually liked about Silent Hill Homecoming. I didn't like that game overall, but they actually it was it was creepy and it did get the the feel down the combat was just so it was so bad in silent hill combat was never good but they never threw mo tons of enemies at you and homecoming like wanted to throw make it more combaty, and the combat still sucked like the other ones <laughs> and of course they threw pyramid head in silent homecoming because he was all the rage at that point he was in the movie and 
It's not Homecoming wanted to be more like the movie. Um, but... But I, I would give this game a 9 out of 10. Like, it's only... Like I said, I think it was two and a half hours for me. You could probably beat it, 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 it in an hour or less if you were really booking it. But I was I was going into all the rooms I could. You'll get cut off and doors will open when they want you to go somewhere and stuff like that. But I pretty much found everything I needed to find in terms of, like, story stuff and background stuff of everything happening and stuff. It was really cool. I would check it out. if you, I think it's only on the PS5, so I would, I would check it out if you have it. It's free. It's 12 gigabyte da download. And like I said, I would have paid 10 bucks, 15 bucks for this, honestly. And I would have, if they said it was out now for 10 bucks, I would have still just been like, okay, done. And they did it right. So, um, it was kind of good that it was short. Like, you probably could have stretched something like this out an hour or two longer. But I'm glad they kind of kept it where it was because I think the impact would have been less if it stretched on and on. A uh, well done game, though. Just check it out. I'd say I go 9 out of 10, but... Enough rambling about that. Let's get to the, uh... I think Death Stranding 2 on the beach was was a thing they showed. Like I said, I have the first one. I have not played it. I know it's weird. It's Kojima. And this one looks bizarre as hell. The guy's, like, fighting with his guitar. <laughs> kind of reminds me of Raiden a little bit from... Uh, I think it's actually Troy Baker playing the person, like, if, uh, mocap as well. And what's his name's back? I can't remember his name. Dakota Fanning is in there too. No, it's L Fanning. Why can't I always forget the guy from Walking Dead? I forget his name. I always forget his name. I don't know why. He's back there again. Obviously, he's in the first one. It looks weird. There's all types of weird. Like I said, I don't know what in terms of like connection to the first game and stuff, but there's weird stuff in here. There's like a weird oil thing. And there's the baby, which I know is in the other one. Looks cool. It looks like fucking amazing graphically. This is the typical weird. Um, stuff. I need to get around to playing the first one, though. I mean, this won't be out till 25, I think it said, so I have time. Um, this game's Stellar Blade looked pretty cool. Um, and this comes out on April 26th, actually. It's like a combat kind of game. You're this woman. What's her name here? It says her name here. Eve. I guess it was called Project Eve originally, according to this, what I'm reading. And you're battling mo weird looking monsters as well. It's kind of like, a, I guess, an apocalypse, post apocalyptic type world. I forget what you, you're like part of the. What is it? Is it say what you're part of? They said it in the thing. Let's see what it says here. Something or other, I don't know. But it looked cool. The combat looked fun. It looked pretty cool. And graphically looked solid as well. Monsters look kind of crazy and interesting that one i wouldn't buy that day one or anything but that's a game i'd keep my eye on personally there was sonic x sonic whatever cross what do you call it? x shadows generation so i guess that's like a remake of sonic generations but they're throwing shadow in as well there was dave the diver which i didn't know about but this time godzilla's in it it kind of looked kind of cool little art style zenless zone zero didn't know much about that was a, kind of a quick thing too there's silent hill short message oh they actually showed a combat trailer for silent hill 2 i'm super pumped about silent hill 2 it does look solid the combat looked cool it looked better than it was back in the original but it's always going to be concerned with me because i love the game it's my favorite game of all time the original so i don't I'm going to be one of those people with this, and I rarely get like this, but with Sound, I'm going to, I might nitpick a little more on it. Um, I do, it does look cool, though. And graphically, it looks pretty good. Um, and this was just like a straight combat thing, so they showed him beating on the nurses and the fucking, before, but the all legs mannequin things and the uh, other things you fight. Pyramid Head had a quick, briefly thing. I'm like, yeah, he's got to get his end thing. But that's where Pyramid Head belongs, so I'll do. Um, and they showed the other enemies that are like wrapped up. Weird looking designs in those games. The combat looked decent. It looked better than it was. I don't know what it's going to end up being. And then they showed some puzzles, I think, too. But I think somebody was saying they kind of redid some of the puzzles where the solutions will be different, I guess. 
I obviously have high hopes for it, and I hope it is good because it's going to be a bit disappointing if it isn't. Of course, I'm going to lose my shit. I will be disappointed, and I will talk about it briefly in a review or something and move on. I won't. I'll go back and play the original. If it's that big of a deal, you know. Oh, there was a game Judas, which is I guess by what's his name? What's his name? Ken Levine. Bioshock. It looks similar to Bioshock. You're using a weapon with one hand, wielding kind of what was it, like plasma stuff in the first one uh, in Bioshock, but similar stuff. It looked kind of cool. That's coming to everything, I believe. Silent Hill 2 is only for the PS5 and PC. I don't know if it's a timed exclusive or what. I don't know. Death Stranding, I guess, is only for the PS5. And Stellar Blade is only for PlayStation 5, I believe, as well. Um, that was Judas was the name of that Ken Levine game. Metro Awakening was a VR Metro game. Dragon Dogma 2. I've never played the first one. A lot of people like the first one. This one looks cool. Uh, Rise of the Ronin is a, is a PS5 exclusive. And I was, I've been looking at this one because this comes out in March. But this is like me seeing like a full trailer for gameplay and stuff. It actually looks pretty cool. You have like a... Uh, Assassin's Creed 2. What was it? Uh, I can't remember the inventor's name. It was in Silent Hill 2. Uh, so Assassin's Creed 2. Da Vinci. Um, that little flying thing you have in that. It has a thing in this we can bust out and be flying around. It looks like open world. One-on-one -on -one combat. Not always one-on-one -on -one combat. There's a part where you're on a horse riding through like a battlefield. It looked really cool. It didn't look like beyond amazing graphically, but it looked cool. I was like, oh, this is a game I was interested in. Then it still, I'm still interested in it after seeing all this gameplay. Looks like there's stealth. You can be stealthy as well in there. They showed him, like, sneaking up behind a guy in a tower and whipping, like, a thing at him, pulling him down. The combat looked fun, but, I mean, I think it's the same people who did uh, Koei Tecmo. So, they do this kind of combat. They've been doing it forever. Um, Until Dawn Remastered. I thought it was a sequel at first when I saw it. It's a cool one. Whatever. I just played that literally like a year ago. Um, that might be something I pick up like briefly. I mean, went for cheap. Is that all they showed? Oh, there was some sponge thing, right? No, whatever it is. Foam stars. I guess that's a wannabe Splatoon or some shit. That's from Square Enix, I think. They are doing another PlayStation showcase like next week or maybe even. What's today? Monday or something like that. Monday the 6th of February. That's just Final Fantasy, I think. So I'll probably just want to watch that just to see it, even though I'm getting that game. I know that game will be good. This is all showing on here. I'm trying to think if I... If there's anything I missed. I don't know. But... It was pretty good. You know, it, was not, it wasn't amazing. It was nice to see some... Silent Hill 2 gameplay, uh, that will probably end up coming around, coming out around Halloween, I would think. I'd love for it to come out sooner. Rise of the Ronin comes out soon, that Stellar Blade comes out in April, so, um, there is stuff coming out, you know, on the horizon. Um, I mean, my focus, I wouldn't get, is it Rise of the Ronin? I wouldn't get that immediately. Anyway, like I said, I'm focusing on Final Fantasy. <laughs> I got to kind of finish up some of the stuff I want to that I own. And Final Fantasy's out in, you know, four weeks, so. I think it comes out the 29th. It is a leap year, I guess. But I am a decent showcase. You know, you know, I think with any of these things, you can always complain about what they didn't show. You know, like, why didn't you get this? Oh, there's another game. What was it? They didn't show it on here. They didn't put it in their thing. It was like a... These are probably just highlights. It was like a top-down type game. Um, something V or some shit? Let me see. There was some other VR stuff as well. Oh, this is an old one. I'm like, they don't... I didn't see this. <laughs> like a top-down, kind of almost like a Castlevania-type Legacy of Cain thing, and Jeff Gershman that just like, it like, should just be Legacy of Cain, the Blood Omen, the first one was top-down. Um, there was that as well. 
All right, let's see what GameStop says real quickly. I don't know why. Oh, Helldivers 2 is the first thing they showed. I never played the first one. People apparently like that game by quite a bit, too. It's, like it's a four-player kind of action-type game. I think you're fighting giant bugs, similar to, like, a Starship Troopers. And there was Foam Stars. V Rising. That's what it was, V Rising. Mm -hmm. Survival RPG. Stunlock Studios. It did end, it, the, the sound hole did end with the trailer now in development, which is interesting. That's going to end up getting, you know, now I think about it, that's going to end up getting delayed a bit. Legendary Tales, that's another VR thing I must have not been paying attention. Like I said, Dragon Dogmas too looks cool, but I never played the first one. Decent showcase, it's not, it wasn't anything spectacular. I was happy to see that a Silent Hill game was free to play, and it wasn't like a half hour thing, it was a good two, two and a half hours. I liked it. Um, but yeah, that's a review on that. Check that out. Sound of the short message. Check it out. It's 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 worth playing and it's free. So really, you're not the only thing that's wasted is your time if you don't like it. <laughs> um, if you're into if you're into horror games though, you should like it. It, it it's well done. Um, and yeah, there's some things I like. The Stellar Blade looks kind of cool. Death Stranding Two does look bizarre as, as always with his stuff and and cool Kojima stuff. And uh, Rise of the Ronin looks cool. <clears throat> and Silent Hill 2 Remake, of course. I'm getting it. If I end up disappointing or loving it, I'm still getting it when it comes out. So. Yeah. Uh, 9 out of 10 on that as well. The short message. But, uh, thanks for checking us out. And have a good day.